CRWS Countering Racism White Supremacy Book Club. Like, share, subscribe, and comment below. November is an exciting time for little children in Holland. Because then Santa Claus arrives in Holland with his steamboat. The boat is loaded with presents. On the quay, hundreds of parents welcome him with their children by singing Santa Claus songs. In many places all over the country, the steamboat arrives with a Santa Claus. This very old bishop brings many servants who have black painted faces and wear this special costume. They all have the same name, Black Pete. Greetings everyone, welcome to CRWS <laughs> Counter Racist Review Decoding of Atlanta Season 3 Episode 2. It is March 25th, 2022. Um, and would any would the other would any of the other hosts like to get us um started with their um thoughts on this episode? The fact that he woke up after a night of being personally dominated and abused by a racist female, and then later went to sleep in the cab right after may hint that he wasn't asleep that his mind was actively thinking of the reality of being a personal captive to a racist while he was being personally captive to a racist sexually i thought it also that, oh sorry go ahead ej how uh how lowly um, suspected racist view the act of sex is nothing. He didn't even know if she spoke English. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, she willingly withheld information from him, and like, how, like there, you got into the bed with him speaking some sort of language, or so you should at least have understood that he needed some sort of help. That she had no desire to help him. So the thought that part was really good. <clears throat> yeah, this episode is, is riddled with um well just right off the bat, uh, since we're already in the in the area, area eight sex, gutter sex, gutter sex is um dangerous and it's tacky, it's trashy, and it's terroristic. It was not helpful. Um, we, we see uh, it, it not helping Aaron in, in, in the first part of the episode, and we see it um, leading to um, paper boys and, and car greater, car greater confinement, known as incarceration, going to jail. I mean, so, and, and uh, why did the uh, conflict occur during um, uh, Area 8? <clears throat> um, no, yeah, yeah, but but be, even before that, the conflict, the blackface holiday, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But <clears throat> the conflict is um, it's, it's uh, it's already there in the first place because it's a it's a black male and a, and a white woman, you know, does not compete. It's already incorrect, you know, it's already incorrect, <clears throat> and yeah, and this this scene was very um, ah, for me it was hilarious, hilariously tacky and, and, and trashy. But that, that's really what, what happens, you know. Um, they know their victims well um, because this N-word, nigga, nigger, uh, it's, it's, it has been, um, we have been conditioned to be real sensitive to us. So sometimes when we hear it, we just, you know, our, our, our brain computer just um, can't handle it. And we just, you know, sometimes go into conflict with the people, direct conflict with the people who um, say, say that word, utter that, that word. And I think it's illogical and incorrect to do such a thing. We have to be uh, <clears throat> calm and serious within the system of racism and white supremacy because the system is like designed 
to mistreat us so we see the black female you know <laughs> responding incorrectly to uh you know paper, paper boy he responded correctly you know he he, he didn't you know and then cause a fuss I, I, you know he didn't you know the word didn't seem to upset him but for the for um, reason though yeah Remember, yeah oh, oh yeah because yeah yeah because, yeah yeah he, he said he's a nigga and that's all he gonna be is a nigga <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, yeah, Paper Boy, in the beginning of this whole thing, he decided that he was always going to be shit. So even if he did make it, he was going to be nothing but shit. So he perceives himself to be inferior. So he had no problem with nigga bitch. And the black female, she had a problem with being reminded that even though you in the bed, you ain't nothing but a nigga, bitch. Even though you're in the bed with some money or whatever, he never had a problem with it. But later, he had a problem with being physically reminded of that jet black skin he carries around. And he couldn't it's fuck with it at all. Right. So he perceived white supremacy on one level, but because he internalized it, he didn't want to be physically reminded. He didn't give a damn about hearing it. That's what he is. Jet black face. Remember, they love me over here until he saw that jet black face, a reflection yeah. in himself, and, and how they really see and... him. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, fuck it, it's their money. He gave it right back yeah, to them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh... This scene right here gives me King Kong, Jack Johnson vibes. Good hmm. comparison. Yeah. What do you all think about the scene where the young black female was um, speaking to? I, I forget the character's name. He has the blonde hair. Uh, you know what scene I'm referring to when she asks, uh, can you ask me something real? Oh. No problem. Could you find that? Yeah, with um with the with the Yeah, Darius. yeah, well, yeah. One, one, one second, one second. I just I just want to comment <clears throat> on a couple of things I was said before we um we continue. Um this part right here, Rihanna, <clears throat> a nigger bitch, a nigger bitch or whatever. I'm noticing this is the second um, like episode that white people have allowed Donna Gover to arrange together where there's a, a direct or a hidden reference to a, a victim of racism who has been mistreated within the system of white supremacy and race so much shape or form. You know, episode one, we had a reference to the heart, to the victim of racism killed by the heart family. And now we have a reference to um, Tirana, who was um, abused by um, black male and many, many white people within the system of white supremacy. I, I'm I'm certain of. So it's just something I I, I noticed, <laughs> something I noticed for sure. And um, yeah, but um, the part you're talking about, Ray, where she's like, uh, "Can you ask me something real?" And then he's like, uh, "What are you doing here?" That part. Yes. That part, that part was very interesting, and and that that, that question, you know, what are you yeah. doing here? But um, see, when she said that, it shows the image of him with the blonde hair. You know, <laughs> so what is it? Like right when she asked that something real, it shows him in the mirror with the blonde hair. <laughs> so you know, what is that implying all across the board? Oh well, I, it could be uh, like point in the mirror that hey you know what was the first part <sighs> remember when he met the girl at the airport he picked her, well before that he called uh urn and he told him this place is my um something my like jesus? this place yeah his jesus and then urn had to stand in the form of the crucifix with his dick and his ass out being examined by a white man. <laughs> yeah, wand, I love her. I know. A wand really, in his hand. Yeah, a black yeah. wand in his hand. And then when he got the urn's ass, it went off. Yeah. Well, hold on. I, 
that scene, the, 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 this, this is uh, rips. This is rips in your face right here. <clears throat> Not only symbolically, like rips and your root up and well singed up, like well singed moment up with the <laughs> symbolic Christian symbolic and, and like sacrificing black male. But at this part, the white man he says, I'm sorry. You know, he says, I'm sorry. And then he goes on to mistreat the black male. And I'm like, oh, <clears throat> oh, that's very common because I white people they're always saying i'm sorry you have um cancer or i'm sorry you know i'm gonna have to arrest you i'm sorry i'm not gonna be 25 alive they're always saying i'm sorry then mistreating you it's like this this i'm sorry concept is so worthless and we should no longer accept apologies from white people we should um need some compensation Amen. <laughs> this conversation but um this is um really interesting even even when you look at it the suitcase is like the phallic symbol in that image. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> yep. I didn't phallic, even notice yep. that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's always hit. It's always hit it. And um, there's a um, uh, back to the car scene that you mentioned. Uh, Darius is saying to that to to Vanessa that we to watch the food fight trailer. Have you seen food fight? You should watch the trailer. I don't know if he's referring to what I'm going to put on the screen right now. It's from nine years ago, so it could be. This is the only thing I'm I'm able to find in regards to um, that. Because I, I do want to watch the trailer because Darius Fine. mentioned it, and, and it could be something. But this is the only thing I'm finding of it. So, yeah. but, but it is Darius, so, you know, so it could be uh -huh. um, exactly what he is telling us to you know. To, oh yeah, I think it is because someone uh, uploaded it. So let's see the one from nine years ago. All right, interesting. Let's see what this is. Get this off the screen and get this on the screen. He's dynamic. Oh boy. He's dramatic. <laughs> He's the big dog. Dex Dog Detective is back in the house. That always runs to the rescue. I still got it. Charlie Sheen is Dex. When in doubt, just do the right thing. With Hillary Duff. Listen, tough guy. Doesn't mean that I couldn't kick your butt. Eva Longoria. I've got a hot case for you. Wayne Brady. I'm your best friend, Daredevil Dan. And Christopher Lloyd. Somebody ordered I recall. The Super Slick. Got milk? Do I look like the Dairy Queen to you? Super Sloop. Yes! No! You! Clean up on aisle one. Is about to tackle. Yo, Dex! They're building an entire army. His biggest case ever. Let's get him! I do have an idea. It's our food! I love this guy. Fire! It's a battle between the world's most beloved brands and the forces of darkness. Attack! We are one. Watch the tail. Oh. Sorry, Charlie. Taste that! It's our world. It's checkout time. Great idea! Food fight. This makes 500 cases you've solved. What's your secret? The secret's inside. Oh, wow. That looks uh, absolutely abhorrent. Yeah, I've never seen such <laughs> ugly animation. I could... I, I, it makes sense, you know, if Darius is on a lot of drugs, this would be terrifying <laughs> to see. <laughs> It is probably exactly. the, the ugliest thing ever. Yeah. But there's a lot of interesting code, coded stuff in there. Yeah, so forces of Battle darkness. Battle of the brand versus the darkness. And then did you see the water exploding? And then there's like an Aunt Jemima character. That's oh, brown. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mrs. Interesting. Bo yeah, um, possibly worth a decoding with the children of CRWS. Yeah, I may, may, may put a pin in it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, the building army um that that's the uh, enter my my ear definitely heard that um 
So definitely share this film is riddled with hidden messages. And there's no coincidence, it's not just a random a high moment that Darius had. The, the producers allowed this to be said. Everything was greenlit. So um, um, another rabbit hole one to follow, possibly. Um, so I have, um, oh yeah, I said the, the, the bit about I'm sorry. Speaking of that scene with Darius, uh-huh. isn't it interesting how he said he was castrated? And then they just she just doesn't say anything after that. Oh yeah, he like no, he said he can't, was... pro- um, huh? he can't procreate. He can't procreate. He had his yeah. nuts, nuts crushed in Nigeria, he said. Yeah. Yep. Wrote that down. <laughs> so you know that means her whole character from the beginning of this whole show has been to be an archetype that reveals the impotency of the black male. Her whole relationship with her has been, she's been disappointed after disappointed after disappointed. That's a great point. So, yeah, and so his whole relationship to her, who in this show, her archetype is, this is the essence of a black female. The best black females are this, this physically lighter complected, not really identified with black people, but you know, kind of because she kind of has to be because her color reveals that she's not white. But everything about her is she desires a um, ephemeral relationship to whiteness. She desires white identification without the whiteness, but ultimately ends up being disappointed in niggas. So that's who's in the bedroom with her because he revealed he can't produce C the ultimate eunuch with no sexuality. He's never expressed any sexuality. So he's the ultimate earn, ultimately. What's that, Mr. EJ? So, I noticed another code talk when we see, um, uh, I forget which white person it is, but there's a white person saying, oh, we, we tolerate people here. You know, we, we tolerate people here. I'm like, oh, so that's how they choose to practice racist white supremacy. You know, they, they will tolerate their victims differently. You know, I'm like, okay, I, we, we've all heard that, you know, they have whole museums called Museum of Tolerance. So, yeah, it's We're the rest of the for our entertainment <laughs> while we're yeah. stupid for the moment, reminding us of our glorious past that enables yeah. us to be stupid for the moment because we're in such a dominant position. Exactly. And uh, I really hope this... I really hope everyone got this message right here. I'm, I'm just gonna skip. We're gonna be skipping a bit, but I really hope everyone got this message here. Um, because when I when I saw this part, four words came to mind, and th- th- this is like you know, racism, white supremacy, one hundred and one. Any nigger will do, or any nigger will do. You know, depending on, you know, they mean the same thing. Any nigga will do when um Dirk is is um you know filled with racist rage and he just wants to uh, he wants to attack Earn, but he can't you know he can't reach Earn. But hey, you know any, in the system white supremacy, any black person would do you know a, a white woman with so called lynch. Hey, we don't have to go find an exact black person who allegedly did this, even though it was most likely a white person. Probably a white relative who did it, but no, we can, any, any black person or, an, or she lied, yeah, yeah, or she lied, yeah, 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 which is like you know, you know, high, high, high chance, high probability, you know. So, I knew, I knew a black male who used to say, Every time we'd be out in public and we would frustrate racists, he would say, mm-hmm. You know, this means they're gonna go punish a black person, right? Who knows less about racism. <sighs> And I used to laugh, but never did I understand that until months later. But he was right. Whenever they practice him, sometimes it's a vendetta because they were frustrated somewhere else, or they would really like to do this to another victim somewhere else. But you're available. 
any nigga will do. This is what this scene is all about. And he kept saying, I don't, you made me do this to you. Yeah. Like, it's almost yeah. like he was raping him or something. It was so oh, weird. Oh, yeah, another, yeah, another, back to my notes. Another uh, Area 8 note, sex. Um, And this is why sex between a white person and a non-white person is always rape. That white person is always raping that non-white person he says he says uh what did dirk say he said you fuck me you fucking me he said something like that right <laughs> and um you know you fuck me it's like sex is aggression you know it's like you know it's like a slight you know it's like you know they use it to harm. yeah exactly he's to harm each other it's like dominance like you fuck me you getting over on me it's what he's saying what about him you know i will destroy you <laughs> I just about to speak on that. There's a t- yeah. there was a TV show with the female who created a show called Chewing Gum, and um, it's called I Will Destroy You. Uh, I Will Destroy You is about a black female being raped. Yeah, super gutter sex, super like uh, just anti-black negarization programming in that, and so called I Will Destroy You show. Yep, <sighs> and also um, since this um, show. And these producers are so refined and they're so uh, crafty with their coded messages. Because I, I, I really, I'm really gonna dive deep um, on this one. But Ray, please, please, please go ahead. I know I interrupted you. Oh no worries. It just um, I'm gonna drop a link. Ray, you got muted. You said you're gonna drop a link. Oh yes. Oh. One moment. Um, but the the lyrics to the song, it just. What the lyrics to what song? It's called "If I Had a Heart" by Fever Ray, and it's the um, the theme song to the TV show Viking. And oh, um, interesting, <laughs> right? And him right there in that moment saying, I will destroy you, just made me think about the lyrics to this song. And you were talking, um, earlier. Well, you know, do you want me to put it in this chat or the what's out? Uh, the, the shack, if, if folks the here want to see it, yeah, okay. All right, so I'll just put that in there. I mean, it's a slow, mellow song, but. The, the lyrics are it's them it's the white supremacists so uh, yeah that's all i had ash what are you gonna share oh i thought one of i mean i thought the, this whole episode was really interesting but a part that i found really i guess i just liked it was when he's i think he's on the phone well he's calling about the um the laptop. Oh, I have two things to say. So the first part is, it's so interesting how much can be done because he gets the laptop through a, like an organization or something that transfers organs. I just thought that that was really interesting how um, if white, white people have the capacity to do and solve problems if they really wanted to. So all this about we don't have the resources. If they can use you know, like transportation services that are used for organs Amen. to get a laptop, they can probably solve a lot of people's day-to-day problems. But then uh, another part in that scene that was so interesting was when he calls and he says, I'm in hell, Sinky. Did you guys catch that too? When he, he says hell and then it pans to the lady in blackface. Yeah, I caught it. I caught it. I thought that part was really, I liked that part. I thought it was very interesting and clever because um. I think it's interesting because a lot of people think that going to Europe, especially Black people think that going to Europe is going to help somehow solve their problems, but it's hell like all the other places, this whole earth. Ain't that disgusting? Ain't that disgusting? <laughs> going there. <laughs> so there is um, <clears throat> another really telling rips you know where paper boys is in uh, greater confinement and i'm like oh like wow it's funny because um you know 
you know, we're, we're all laughing at this scene. I know I'm laughing at this scene, but if you're really understanding, you know, our situation in the system of white supremacy, this is what the races have done. They made our imprisonment within this system um, comfortable or at, or at least tolerable, you know, depending on our damage. You know, some of us have been damaged quite a bit, so we have to have um, more comfort. Or, or, or less comfort depending on what's been done to us but we are we're all like and, and that scene with paper boy you know just you know chillaxing you know enjoying his his cell you know that's sometimes or if not all times that that's us in, in the prison system or at least me do you RC remember the, for sure do you remember the dis-ease of the guards every time he turned around to communicate to them what he was communicating with paper boy about he was uneasy. The guards were anxious, right? So anybody in their right frame of mind, in a basic right frame of mind, would not be comfortable as Paperboy was. So I think the fact that they were talking to him like via, like through to each other and then talking to him and making him more comfortable, they knew his pitiful thinking that he would be more comfortable because he's safer in a so-called greater confinement than he is in reality. And that has actually been statistically shown. Your health is better in greater confinement as a black male than it is when you're so-called free. Your life is actually extended and your health care, your health reported health is actually better. But in your mind, you're comfortable in your mind. But anybody outside of that mind would go, this nigga in prison and he comfortable. So it's, I think it's just revealing that they know you have to have a certain mind to be comfortable in racism, white supremacy. You have to be totally insane and have the individualistic mindset that your personal comforts outweigh the reality that you are confined, controlled, dominated, illegitimately. He went to jail illegitimately. He didn't do anything incorrect other than what we know to be incorrect under the code. Exactly. That's actually true. <sighs> what was the reason for him being in jail? So it looks like um, during the attempted gutter sex with the um, non-white female and the white woman, um, it looks like that commotion led to his um, <clears throat> greater confinement. But they never yeah. spoke a charge and they never gave a scene where he did something that could be construed as an offense against the so-called law. Yeah, he's just a black man. So, so the whole concept was, yeah, the whole concept was this nigga's already imprisoned by this false reality we've given him. He will think a greater confinement is comfort, is a respite from this chaotic other confusion. He'll have his three hots in a cot and he'll be comfortable in his mind and never question, what the fuck am I doing here in the first place under your supervision, under your domination? Yep. And notice how um, throughout the planet, the prison planet, wherever there, uh, there's more um, white people than non-white people, there's going to be more um, comfortable prisons, whether the, the prisons are actual prison facilities, like we see right here on the screen, or just homes, you know, health facilities, you know, wherever there's more white people, that's where the, all the health, so-called health benefits and greater comfort is going to be concentrated um, as we saw in this episode. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Did anybody notice the coughing between the last episode and this one? And what do y'all make of it, if anything? Say that again? Does anybody, did anybody notice the coughing in the last episode and in this one, the young yeah. girl and the the last one that we watched and this one with earn sneezing. Yeah, yeah sneezing. sneezing. Yeah. Yeah. 
And yeah, twice. Y'all make anything <laughs> of that? Yeah, do y'all make anything of that? I mean, uh, pretty much the white people were re- reacting negatively to it, so um, uh, that's what I wrote down. They took his his DNA. Yeah, I wrote that down. Taking that's black it. genetic material when they took his um his snot. We all make of them all yelling out kazoo type. Yeah, see, I'm sure that has some meaning to it. Some I mean, it's German. At the same German. time, where they used to drink people's blood and eat black people's flesh, ground up in the powders. Gesundheit was when they thought spirit was coming out of you. Because that's how archaic they were about sneezing and coughing. Just the reason to eat your blood and drink your flesh, or eat your flesh and drink your blood. It's in uh, mummies, vampires, and uh, werewolves. I think werewolves, mummies, and vampires. Do oh, a yeah. review of it on the house. We've been it's talking different. about vampires a lot lately. Yeah, and then I, th- this scene right here is uh, very, very, very telling. Here we go. Let me just just the imagery alone. Just the the white, the white. The white figure, yeah, the white Santa Claus priest figure, just just coded to be a religious. But there we go. The the blackface, you know, the tradition, you know, this is what the paper boy um, got paper boy into greater confinement. The the females who were fighting, they were arguing over this tradition. You know, they are the Saint Peter tradition, the blackface thing that some white people um, choose to do um, around the globe. Let me get a better image of it if I can on the screen here we go not the best but um <clears throat> yeah just a bunch of white people who are you know through the act of playing painting their self black and wearing a black wig they are able to experience you know some sort of energetic role play of hey I'm pretending to be a nigga I'm pretending to be a nigga it's you know this is fine I could do this once a year this is you know I wish I was a black person I wish I had color I wish I could produce colors I didn't have to you know uh maintain the system of white supremacy to keep my numbers um you know going growing because perhaps without this system we would go um, extinct or it would be hard for us to keep our numbers up I don't know I think sometimes the blockers, in order to combat their inferiority complex, they're compensating, just like we're compensating for their implementing or attempting to impose an inferiority complex. We have to constantly renew our mind to the truth of what we really come from before their imposition of white supremacy. They have to do the opposite. They have to mock and uh, berate color, but at the same time, lust and desire it. And why did Earn wave back? Like, what? <laughs> oh my gosh, he's too much. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing, Lakeith Stanfield. Who name? What's his name on this show? The one with the blonde hair. Darius, Darius. Yeah, Darius, or oh, whatever. Notice his hair is dyed blonde. He gets in a white van full of white people, even the female that's next to him has a white parent in real life. Yep. And, and I thought that was... And she's married crazy. to a white person. <laughs> oh, she mm-hmm. is. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you all notice yeah. when he was standing next to the white Jesus figure? No. Yeah, it was a scene where he was standing in front of a white man. He kind of looked like, you know, the the regular images of Jesus. I thought this. this yeah, I thought this no, was so they, they were they were closer, but yeah, it was something similar to that. But they were standing closer. Mm. Uh, uh, but that you. made me think about. Um, yeah, well, maybe you just go back and look at it again, but that made me think about Kanye West. And remember when he was on stage with that white Jesus? And hasn't he dyed his hair blonde at one point? Yep. Yeah, many, yep. yeah, many, yeah, many. Yeah, yeah. he was next to Trump with blonde hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and let's go back to episode one, you know, when they brought up that thing with the Armenians, you know, they white till they ain't. You know, this yeah, is also, Donald Glover, I'm sure he knows, yeah. I'm sure he knows yeah. Mr. West. 
Now, like I said, prior to them killing this so-called Tupac character, uh, which was the, extremely tacky. Yeah, the um the uh, white female doula asked uh, Vanessa, "Was she okay?" And then she said, "I'm good." This brought me to uh, Gus's program a few weeks ago, where a uh, you know black male was um, in the U- uh, Ukraine, where he was talking about his uh, you know um, uh, experience dealing with these white people that wasn't helping him and pretty much they had asked him the actual same question he said i'm good she said i'm good in this episode (laughs) yeah this is really symbolic this whole like white people are so uh, so crafty with their coded messages and and like how they will implant images in your minds because you know we are first um primed with to image of tupac you know darius says uh you know uh, tupac energy oh that's tupac right there so we are we are we already um most of us are aware of the tragic demise of tupac so we already have the image of tupac's first death in our minds you know him being incorrectly murdered by white people so now this episode grants up with a second a double kill i put down here the double killing of tupac you know we get to kill the black male twice we get to you know you know, Negro phobic, Negro philia. You know, we could bring him back the black male from dad, kill him again. You know, and not only kill him and uh, you know, just shoot him quickly. We're, we're gonna uh, suffocate him. You know, horrifically. You know, no one's gonna know what's gonna happen. It's gonna be a total shock. You know, because that's how we uh, that's how we like it. We like to get the you know uh, that that fear, that shocking fear of torment. You know, that's that's what us racist folk get off on that's what i got from this scene i suspect some people in the audience are just there to get off on this um murder happening yeah fake um, emotion <laughs> yes. don't you, you feel know, like too crying. it's it's oh sorry it's so like no, you're no, the, no, the you're contraption, the <laughs> you're the contraption the set up to kill him just so impersonal nobody's close to him <laughs> it's like they're almost disgusted by him yeah, yeah. death and dual. like yeah, yeah the only person that she's not even near near enough to touch him yeah. so what kind of weird way to yeah. die like this where people are just watching like a tv show and not actually interacting with you yeah and, and then you die by this weird sick scientific contraption yeah and i suspect i suspect this is um you know stuff like this is probably what, what they call this uh holistic killing or something like that Anywho, I'm suspecting something like this is, is actually going on, but I want to talk about the inversion of just like the Yoruba nature, uh, racist man and racist woman, aka people who call themselves white. Uh, they have uh, she's a so-called deaf doula, <laughs> and and um and um and um you know and non-white people exist. We have um doulas who help to bring you know birth, you know, so white people will specialize in, in deaf. You know, this, this could be you know coded symbolic of that you know white people have specialized in death they, they have mastered the contractions they they use their science to create tools that you know create death produce death the majority of things that they have arranged on planet earth produce death so really the really original meaning the original meaning of doula in greek is slave because oh, those were wow. the people that were helping to birth white women's kids so very interesting Gee, so you know, all roads lead to the depravity of what we're what we're attempting to counter. Notice how, when Darius <laughs> and Van go on this so-called, I guess, an adventure, for lack of a better term, and you know, they go, they meet this white people. They, you know, they get in the van, then they go to the dying or the death of Tupac, which is really extra tacky or whatever they had no idea they had no plan they're just going with the wind go just doing whatever and when they get to the place or whatever they know why they're there they the white people they know why they're there but the black people the non-white people they don't know why they're there they're just like just going with the flow and not one question go, yes not one question basically yeah not one oh yeah yeah not one question how we been taught and it reminds me how Nelly Fuller says, okay, that's act one. What's act two? We don't think. We do not think. And this show shows that so well. It does an excellent job of showing how we do not think. And, and, we're always just- and the guy doesn't even, the, the guy who's dying doesn't even speak. 
So you don't even know if he's actually chose to die or anything. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, nobody actually knows. Yeah, this could be just, yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, this is also a Dizzy Fuller moment no, because, you know, no, when, when, no, when, no, when, when it, Wait, this is another Neely Fuller. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's have one person talk at, at a time. It's not a Neely Fuller moment because, you know, once it gets to Act 3, you know, non-white people confuse victims like myself. We're often left, you know, harmed, shocked, you know, and weakened in, in a worse position than like we were in Act 1 because, you know, we didn't ask questions. And this is, this is where it led. So, you know, trauma, more and trauma. The- Notice how she, the, the doula, goes up to her, too. So you don't even know what this, this could be some weird sexual whatever thing going on because the doula introduced herself to her as a way to prevent her from, like, asking and trying to figure things out on her own. Very interesting. The doula was acting like I've witnessed many white people with the questions. Stay in the question lane. Mm. Yeah, the uh, white woman had a lot of questions for Vanessa. Vanessa never even asked the question. <laughs> uh, EJ, please. To let a white person assume moral superiority over you in spiritual matters shows that you are grossly confused. Today, I had a white woman, racist suspect, try to tell me, because I'm an empath, I usually feel things about people and the spiritual nature of what's going on. I got up, literally, and walked away from her while she was talking. No fucking way you know anything about spirituality. No fucking way. So you couldn't even get off 30 seconds with me unless I really had didn't have to go pee or something. But that's the whole idea of letting this, you're a spiritual doula. Get the fuck out of here. You don't know God, you know racism. <laughs> Incredible display of black self respect. Remember when Ern asked for the um, what, $20,000? He asked for an advance for Paperboy. And Somewhere around there, Dirk said, um, nothing like America, right? Like racism not is like it's not global. Like that was really interesting that he said that. Yeah, during this scene. Yeah. yeah. Playing into the whole, you know, racism is only in America. It's not here. We don't practice it like that. Yeah, well, yeah. Did he say was it was he the one that said we tolerate, we tolerate here? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the refined confusion, you know. See, not all, not all places white people are racist. Ha ha, ha ha ha. At the same time, you know, people running around with black wig, afros, and black faces. It's, it's <sighs> hilariously trashy, tacky, terroristic. Yeah, I really hope the Tupac um, <clears throat> attempted decoding I put out there made sense. To, to people just you know white people really did not like that the black male Tupac so, and, and they will forever um uh kill this male over and over again you know create myth that he's you know somewhere free of the system not murdered by the system you know while at the same time you know producing images that you know the audience is gonna you know, compete. Oh, we're killed. We're seeing Tupac die again. Oh, Tupac is dying again. You know, really, really try tacky, super tacky. Do you have any brief suspicions as to why that is? Oh, I just um, well, drugs is weapon against us. Uh, that text you know shows how Tupac was um targeted and was viewed as a threat by white people and um, um, discovering um. <clears throat> the attempted kind of racist work T5 did do and was attempting to do like uh, what he wanted to do with his, his own record label I think he's going to call it um, I, I forgot what it's going to call it I'm not even going to euthanasia or something like that that's probably incorrect but 
he was going to do his own, his own thing or attempt to do his own thing or whatever other people allow him to do. And then it, it seemed like they only wanted to allow him to die. Uh, so I, I think they hate him. I think um, the image of Tupac, you know, and him uh, producing the thug, the thug code and um, how that was actually somewhat constructive. The person actually um, did some research and discovered what the, uh, the thug code was and not just... Uh, at the time when Tupac was calling himself a thug, it actually had some sort of constructive meaning, I would say. It wasn't just, hey, I'm a, I'm a thug and I, I, I got expensive clothes and I shoot black people. That wasn't what it, um, at least when Tupac was saying it, that's not what he, what he meant. He had a whole like code and- Are you referring to the acronym for thug life? Um, no, I'm just referring to- um, Oh, just in general, okay. No, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. all right, I got you. Yeah, I don't even know. What, I don't even know what thug life means. I don't even know. It means uh, the hate that you give fucks, uh, little infants. I don't know, but if if you were listening to the cows during the book club, you know the hate you give. They talked about it in there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, y'all, y'all, y'all remember that. I do, I do. And just as just the image on the screen here, I, I suspect this is how um, how white, how most white supremacists feel amongst non-white people, especially black people, you know, they all just sort of we all just sort of blend in, you know, so I'll just be some sort of just just black figures, not really persons. Perhaps that is how I'm distorted the white. Perception has become, or maybe I'm incorrect. Hopefully, I am. <laughs> but yeah, now I'm just, um, just, just, just talking. I, all my notes have been, um, yeah, yeah, scratched off. So, if folks have any, um, any other observations they wanted to um, bring to the table? Well, just for current. Uh, what's, what's going on today uh, with Paperboy being in jail overseas, same thing with this um, black female basketball player, Brittany Griner. So that's some correlation there. Um, yeah. Say no to tragic arrangements and no white friends. Like the image. That, that too. <laughs> Like the image right in front of us. Exactly. Oh, and back to Dirk, the Dirk character and how he just easily had access to 20K. Yeah, white people. Most white people are like that, I suspect. You know, just comfortable. Yeah. Could be incorrect. Don't dye your hair blonde. Don't wear wigs or weaves. Um, and yeah, I think that's, I think yeah, I think we could call it a call it a wrap. Um, we may or may not be here again tonight. Um, but thanks for um, tuning in. Please like, share, and comment on this. Sorry, I, I could already see that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, account is still very much scrutinized, criticized, hidden by white people. So do your best to share this information so we can. Um, produce system of justice so we can stop um, having to do such things like talk about race and white supremacy or you know, all the filth that it produces because uh, I'm sure we're all quite tired. Um, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for sharing and 